What we're going to do now is take a look at the waveforms that we use with our synthesizer. Over here on the right I have a oscilloscope set up so that we can actually see the waveform as it plays. Let's start with the sawtooth waveform. As you can see it's a rising ramp and this is about the simplest waveform we have. The next we have a square waveform, a triangle, a sine waveform. Next I want to cover some wave shaping waveforms and we will start out with a square wave that has a variable duty cycle. And the next several waveforms we're going to look at all have a similar wave shaping duty cycle that can be altered. Let's first look at pulse. And down here, these three blue knobs control the duty cycle of the square wave. Pulse width here is going to control how long the pulse width is manually. <laughs> Now let's take a look at what an LFO will do in combination of these controls here. a third mode that we can use when dealing with these wave shaping waveforms and that's when you turn both the pulse width modulation depth to zero, the pulse width to zero, and now we're able to control it using the filter envelope generator. So looking at the sustain control here and we'll go ahead and start the waveform, we'll move this sustain control and we'll see it change. <laughs> So now we can actually make it change every time we strike the key. Let's turn the decay up a bit, sustain down quite a bit, and every time I press the key we'll see it basically animate. Or we can go ahead and include a tack in there. We can shut the decay down. But as you can see, we can do quite a bit with the filter envelope generator controls to change the wave shape. Now, of course, our filter is going to change with these controls at the same time, but I find that this is a pretty good combination. Another wave shaping waveform is the saw shaper, and it looks like this. And it kind of looks like a bunch of M's. So if we change the pulse width manually, as you can see we almost have a sawtooth there. And then it kind of splits and then it goes into a different waveform. I actually got the idea for that waveform from the Korg NTS synthesizer and it has a waveform like that built into it as one of the default waveforms. Again we can use an LFO to modulate this using the PWM depth and rate. These probably don't sound all that exciting as they are right now, but when we start adding in delay and phaser and other controls, they get more interesting. And again, when we set this to zero and zero, we can control this with the filter envelope generator.
we have another wave shaper down here at the bottom simply called wave shaper and this is a bit cleaner uh, form of wave shaper and the reason why I say it's cleaner as we'll discuss here in a bit is this wave shaper actually uses the blep saw waveform and this is what it looks like and you'd say well that's just a sawtooth well let's change the pulse width manually so you see what happened there we start out with a sawtooth of the ramp going up and it changed into a sawtooth of the ramp going down and we can do the same thing with the LFO in the pulse width modulation depth and we can also turn these controls all the way down and control it with the filter envelope generator One more wave shaper is the blep square. The blep square is very similar to pulse. As we see with pulse, it's a square wave. With blep square, it is also a square wave, but it's a lot cleaner square wave. And we can do the same thing that Pulse did, except that you will not be able to modulate it with the filter envelope generator. You can only modulate it with these controls here. Let's take a look at the manual control. Now let's try it with an LFO modulation. Blep square is very useful when you want a very nice square wave and you need to be up in the higher frequencies. Let's try and listen to it at a higher frequency. Now let's pitch bend it. It's very pure sounding. Now let's try the standard square wave. You probably heard a whole lot of garbage. It's a whole lot of extra harmonics that's interfering with the purity of the sound. We also have a blep saw. At high frequencies, it sounds fairly pure. Now let's try our standard saw shape. Again, we have a whole lot of trash in the background that is usually not wanted. We can go into further detail to how and why we have a whole lot of trash in the background with these simpler waveforms versus these more exotic waveforms. But for now, we're going to move on and look at some more of these waveforms. Here we have noise. And the noise waveform is very useful for many effects, like wind. Or some other effects, like... Moving on, we have two saws that are detunable. We have three saws that are detunable. And you may 
ask, well, if three saws is better than two, why would we have a two saw detunable? And the reason why is because three saws can take up quite a bit of CPU power and we wouldn't be able to use all of the features that the BP synth is capable of doing if we tried to use three saws versus two saws. You'll find out as we go on, sometimes we can push the BP Sense little microcontroller too far and we end up with some undesirable consequences. I can show you one now with two saws and we can use auto pitch to do this effect. But if we try to use three saws, we get clicking in the background and the reason why is because the microcontroller cannot handle all the computations that's needed to get that third saw in there. So we just have two saws and we have no problem. Another feature I'd like to show with these waveforms, especially with three saw and two saw, we have a control here called oscillator one frequency and it's a coarse adjustment. And here is what it does. So let us change one of the sawtooth waveforms frequencies by quite a bit more than just the simple detune. So we can actually get what sounds like a chord. It gets more interesting when we have a three saw waveform. Of course, we can use this control with sawtooth. Square. triangle, and so on. The next waveform we're going to take a look at is called the Morph Saw. And Morph Saw is a sawtooth waveform that is somewhere between our standard saw waveform and blep saw. The saw waveform is the simplest waveform and uses the least amount of CPU power. The blep saw waveform uses quite a bit of CPU power because of the algorithms and the table lookups that it must do to accomplish the pure waveform output that it can do at the higher frequencies. Morsaw is in between the two and it sounds and looks a lot like any other sawtooth. To give you a quick comparison, let's go up a few octaves and let's go ahead and pitch bend this down. And that doesn't sound too bad. Now let's try that with the standard saw and see what that sounds like. You hear all those harmonics trashing the purity of the sound. And here's the blep saw one more time. Which of course is very, very clean. Morph saw in itself is probably not used very often, but we use morph saw in the three saws and two saws because it sounds very, very clean and allows you to use more than one oscillator so that you can have a detune effect. If we were to try to use two or three blepsaw oscillators and then detune them, we would eat up so much CPU power that we would start to hear a bunch of clicking sounds as I demonstrated with the three saws and using the auto pitch at the same time. So that's the point of having the morph saw. The last two waveforms we're going to go over is hard sync saw and hard sync square. Now these are very special sounding waveforms. And there's a few extra things we have to do to get them to make their special sound. Let's start with the hard sync square. We're actually using two oscillators. And we're going to sync our square waveform to what is a sawtooth waveform. And this will make more sense later on in the lessons. But for now, when I select one of the hard sync waveforms, 
I have to take oscillator 1 and turn it down a bit. Take oscillator 2 and turn it up. Now you're starting to hear it a little bit. Now let's turn this auto pitch depth up a bit. And then we're going to use the filter envelope generator to control the pitch. So let's turn the attack up just up a hair. Turn the decay up a little bit. Turn the sustain down and let's see what happens. Let's go down an octave. Sometimes you'll have to tweak it in a little bit to get a good, nice, smooth sound, but let's go up another octave. Back down. One more. One more. You can hear it's quite a distinctive sound. We also have hard sync saw. And actually, when you watch the scope over here, you can see the re triggering of the waveform by these little dents at the top of the sawtooth. Right here is where a retrigger happened. Same thing happens through the square waveform. We'll actually see the duty cycle will change every now and then. Let me try to get this so it'll go ahead and capture that for us. See right here, we have a quick re-triggering suddenly. This is our normal square waveform right here, but at this point, we re-triggered to sync with the other oscillator. One more thing I'd like to add to this is that we have another knob here next to where we select our waveform. And this knob over here is so we can actually manually select our waveform, like this. <laughs> The reason why I have this knob here is because we have lessons that don't have all of these waveforms selectable. In the beginning all we have is a saw. Then we start adding like the square and then the triangle and then the sine wave and, and then as we progress in our lessons we keep adding more and more. I put this over here so that we can select between the different waveforms when we have less than what we have actually here in the drop down menu. Now that we've covered all the waveforms, we're ready to move on and take a look at all of these extra controls that we have at our disposal for changing the way our synthesizer sounds.